Um, okay, so you can elevate the, your feet um, uh, onto a stool or a soccer ball or anything that you have in the bathroom that will elevate your feet. So this basically changes the angle of your rectum and then you're able to evacuate. Um, this is the famous squatty potty. A lot of people are into that. They buy the squatty potty and all it is is, is elevating your feet, changing the angle of your rectum and being able to go to the bathroom more easily. Um, and if you want to do that, go for it. You can buy that thing. Um, and then if you if that's not enough then and you want to still strain, then we suggest first doing some purse lip breathing. And that basically will allow your pelvic floor to relax. So you kind of go like this. And that may allow your pelvic floor to relax so that you can go to the bathroom. Um, okay. And the third thing is constipation. So number three is constipation or poorly formed stool. Um, now, constipation is defined, there's a lot of definitions for constipation in, in this country. Some people feel like, you know, you can go every three days and it's no problem. Some people feel they want to go three times a day. It's really a very personal choice what feels like constipation for you. Um, but the bottom line is that if you have the sensation that, you, you know, you feel like you, you go to the bathroom, you pass stool, and then you have the sense that there's still stool in there or, or what we call incomplete evacuation, that's constipation, that's retained stool in the rectum. And that retained stool in the rectum basically is gonna cause you problems with your hemorrhoids. So if you're not having a well-formed, easy to pass stool every day, and that's gonna be very individual based on the person, then you really need to work on your bowel habits, okay? So let's talk about stool formation. Now, stool formation occurs, you know, with or without us, it happens, it's just part of our natural um, anatomy, it's just a part of what, what we do as human beings. Um, but what you can do to improve stool formation is actually uh, take a fiber supplement. And the reason why we need to take fiber supplements is pretty simple. For, um, for most of human existence, we ate a very fiber-rich diet. We uh, you know, ate vegetables we grew in our house, fruits we grew, um, we ate whole wheat bread that was made you know, in our kitchen or down the street or something like that. We didn't eat processed food. And the, for the last 100, 150 years, our food has really changed. Our food sources have really changed um, the way that we you know, eat food and stuff like that. So um, very often people have a very low fiber diet. Um, and, and even in, in a place like San Francisco where people eat very well, very often most, almost everybody eats you know, three to four days very well. They're going to work, they're doing their thing, they take their food, they eat lentils or kale or whatever, and they eat very well for three or four days. But then there's a day in the week, you know, there's a day on the weekend or a couple of days on the weekend where you eat a hamburger and pizza, and then all of a sudden the day's gone by and you haven't had any fiber. And that one day in a week can really set a person back. And this is why we recommend that everybody is on a fiber supplement. There's no reason not to be on a fiber supplement. It's like a vitamin. Um, people resist it because fiber can be gross to take. Um, but there's really no reason to not take fiber. And the truth is, is if you're struggling with hemorrhoids, the very first thing you have to do is take a fiber supplement. You cannot get away with not doing that. Um, so what kind of fiber supplements are out there? So there's a number of them. Um, there's basically two types of fiber, insoluble and soluble. And very often you'll find stuff that's actually mixed. It's a mix of insoluble and soluble fiber. So insoluble fiber are things like psyllium husk, metamucil, um, Citrusyl, console, all the stuff that when you mix it, it kind of turns like a thick, um, thick drink. That's all because of the insoluble fiber. And insoluble fiber is fine if you like that. You can certainly feel free to take it if it works for you. Um, but just keep in mind that the insoluble fiber actually scrapes the colon and can cause more issues with bloating and gas. Um, so if you either don't like that the way that it is like so thick or you have issues with bloating or gas Don't take the soluble fiber the insoluble fiber because the most important thing is that you take it every day um, Not that you take a heavier fiber You may actually not need that many, you know Generally healthy people don't actually need such heavy fiber supplementation So then there's insoluble fiber and that's basically apple pectin apple pe you can find that in many forms either benefiber or or the generic brand of Benefiber, um, Inulin, which is kind of like the natural dropper. It's like a dropper, like a tincture kind of thing that you can put in your um, food, your drinks in the morning, or the fiber gummies. So one thing to think about is that the soluble fiber you take with food, you always take it with food. You can put it in your coffee or your tea in the morning, and you just take one or two teaspoons. You wanna aim for about nine gram, nine to 10 grams of fiber supplementation a day. Um, that usually will kind of take care of any issues with bowel habits. Now, the other thing to remember about fiber is that it's, it is, um, uh, 
marketed in the United States as something that treats constipation, and that's just because Americans are constipated. That doesn't actually have anything to do with fiber. Um, fiber itself is just a regulator. So for people who have actually tends more towards the looser stools, and there's people whose constitutions just they tend towards looser stools, um, they uh, also really benefit from taking fiber. That will actually help form the stools and kind of reduce the urgency. So a lot of times people with loose stools also have associated urgency. So that will help reduce the urgency as well. Um, so yes, fiber is the first thing you're gonna do if you're having problems with hemorrhoids. And if you come to our clinic and say, um, I have problems with hemorrhoids, but I don't take fiber. We're not going to do anything for you until you take fiber, because the truth is, is that alone will probably take care of most of your problems. Um, so yeah, you want to aim for about nine to ten grams of supplementation, and with a goal of about thirty grams of fiber a day. Um, and if you're really, you know, if you want to do that naturally, just by what you eat, feel free. But that's a lot of work, and there's no real reason to not take a fiber supplement. Um, all right, so if you take a fiber supplement and you're still struggling and things are not improving with your stooling, you know, you're still having problems with constipation or irregularity or something like that, then it's time to think about taking a laxative. And let's just talk about laxatives um, briefly. This will probably be the last thing that I talk about with you. Um, so laxatives, there's two types of laxatives. There's propulsive, or I think it's called propulsive laxatives or something like that. Um, and those are basically the pills or um, the, the dual collax, bisacodal, that kind of stuff, the Senna. Um, even the Senna T, they all work kind of to irritate the muscles of the colon and basically shove the stool out. Now the problem with those kind of uh, laxatives is that they really um, are not good for long-term use. So if you're if you're kind of constantly taking something to make your colon work, your colon basically gets lazy. Those muscles are like, oh, I just need the medicine, and then you kind of become, can become dependent on it. So those medicine, medications are really ideal for um, random problems you're traveling or you're you know you get yourself into trouble once or twice a year feel free to use those medicines without an issue um, but if you need something more regular more constant it's really a uh, Miralax is probably the only thing that's safe for you to use now Miralax is an osmotic laxative which means all it means is it just draws water into the colon and into the stool um, to loosen the stool up so it's a much uh, uh, it's just as a, a much safer option, and it's actually safe for everyday use for the rest of your life. You can take Miralax forever if you want. Um, the other thing that's nice about Miralax is since it's a powder, you can actually kind of titrate up to figure out how much you need. So you might just need a teaspoon, you might need the whole capful, whatever. You can take up to four doses of Miralax a day, four capfuls a day, which is quite a lot of Miralax. Um, but yes, yeah, so you find your kind of balance of how much Miralax do you need. So the combination, the best combination for stooling around constipation for most people is gonna be a fiber supplement in the morning and then a little bit of Miralax at night, whatever amount you need. The other thing to keep in mind is a lot of people will take Colace or Ducasate sodium. It's that little orange pill that um, a lot of people are given by their primary care. And unfortunately, that's just packaged soap. All it is is packaged soap. So it's actually not that effective for helping your stools. Um, it basically is best for if you're taking narcotics. So if you're taking narcotic for whatever reason, um, the Ducasate sodium, the Colace can be pretty effective in keeping stools loose, but otherwise it really just, it's just soap. So you just eat soap if you want it or whatever, but it's just packaged soap and all it does is kind of paste up your stools and it actually um, can, can cause you more problems than good if you're struggling with constipation. And then finally I'll say one of the things that people complain about is um, itching and discomfort. Uh, itching, you know, wetness, moisture, things like that at the anus. Um, and that very often has to do with your with the way that you're cleaning. Um, and, and unfortunately, um, adults have been marketed to by the baby wipe industry or whatever um, to want to feel fresh and um, uh, feel clean or whatever. So everyone buys these um, baby wipes, even the fancy brand that you get at Whole Foods is just saline water. All of them have residual residue that's left behind on the anaderm. It doesn't matter how fancy the ones you buy are, they all have residue left behind. And if you leave residue on the anaderm, it basically is like over cleaning your face. I don't know if when you were a teenager, maybe you had acne or somebody did, and you would like kind of over clean your face with toner, and then you would actually get more zits, you'd actually get more acne, um, because the, the, your, the face would actually over produce oil because you've over cleaned it. That's exactly what's happening in the anaderm. The anaderm skin is actually very specialized. It's there to, uh, it maintains the moisture barrier, it keeps the bacterial load under control. I mean, think about that skin under there. It's hot, it's wet, and there's tons of bacteria. This skin is really, really specialized, and it honestly wants nothing on it. 
nothing. So if you use any sort of wipe, you are screwing up your anaderm, you're screwing up the moisture barrier, and you're gonna end up with itching. So basically you over dry the anaderm by cleaning it, the residue sits there, then the anaderm produces moisture, that moisture causes problems, and it's just this vicious cycle. So you gotta get off the baby wipes, there's no reason to use them. Um, the other thing is over cleaning with soap in the shower. If you get off your baby wipes and things are still not good, then you just gotta stop the soap back there. And just let just clean it with water and that and a, you know a clean washcloth and that's it you just no soap at all um, also can really help if you're having itching at your anus um what else was gonna say so the best way to clean is you know just toilet paper if that works for you if not use just a spray bottle of water you can always get a bidet or something like that to kind of keep your skin intact so I think that that's it and the truth is is you know, very simply, if you can improve the pressure in the rectum, whatever it is that you're doing that's causing pressure in your rectum, whether it's constipation or poorly formed loose stools, sitting for too long or straining, if you improve those things, you will never have problems with your hemorrhoids again. So good luck. Bye.